competitive drone racing, and airframe design, this time on Hack 5. Commonly, racing quadcopters feature very similar components. You'll find that they all have similar power systems like motors and propellers and ESCs coupled with flight controllers and FPV packages. And while there's a lot of variations in those components, nothing makes more of a difference on the racetrack than really how it all comes together, how they're implemented. And here to talk to us a little bit about the theory behind what makes a good racing quadcopter is RC modeling expert and my good friend and designer of flight systems, which yeah. is kind of awesome, Kevin McKay. Kevin, thanks for coming on again. Hey, good to be here. It's awesome. I, I'm just loving the fact that this hobby, if you really, if you want to go down the rabbit hole, it's really fun because uh, it lends itself to so many fun things in STEM. You're constantly learning. You're constantly refining and building better craft and racing against yourself. You know, part of it is like, oh, I know I can do better. And then the other fun part is when it gets really competitive and we start. Right. That's how we met, in fact. Yeah, right, right. Was racing each other. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really a fun competitive sport that's like builds camaraderie. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about like, when I first got into this, most of the quadcopters I was seeing was what we call an H quad. Right. And now, it's weird. It's like there was a flip flop. It's like at first quadcopters were pluses, then they were X's, then they were H's, and now X's are coming back. And if none of that makes any sense, we, we let's shake it down. Sure. Let's talk about frame design because, again, these components are very similar. I got what twenty two of fours in here. It's the same thing and that that. But these are these are two extremely different quadcopters. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So what? So get, tell me what are the basics of a frame? So, you know, the, the main thing is, is you're probably going to be carrying FPV gear, you're going to have a propulsion system, and you just want everything uh, to, to, to lay out clean and be somewhat protected in a crash situation. Um, and, and that's, I mean, basically it. I mean, but you, with different geometries, you'll get different flight characteristics. Um, you know, I, I favor the X because um, you know, all the CG is concentrated in the center of the frame, which allows it to change direction really, really quickly. Um, it's just easier to fly and more maneuverable, in my opinion. So as you mentioned CG, that's the center of gravity. Yes. Um, you know, the center of gravity, I would expect on, on all of these to be so, uh, you know, in the center. That's right. really where you want it. If you have too much junk in the trunk or too big of a camera in the front, yeah. You're going to be offsetting, and then you you know you can sure you can fix it in post, as it were. You can fix it with trimming or with uh, you know different PIDs and flight care you know different characteristics in the flight controller. Right. But you're losing your potential there. Right. I know with these H's, m the idea was to give yourself a big fuselage here so that you can pack in all of that gear. Right. Uh, you know, so I can have the camera in the front so it doesn't see the propellers, which is nice if you're right. trying to get you know, gorgeous photography yeah. and such. But I think two things have happened. One, the racing scene really took off. Absolutely. So who really cares if you see your props or, or not, right. you know? Uh, and then the other thing is the miniaturization of the components. Exactly, yes. So I don't think that an H is really all that necessary anymore. So if you were to say, getting into, uh, uh, getting into racing for the first time, would you mm -hmm. recommend an X and what would be some of the benefits there? Personally, yes, absolutely. I would recommend an X because, I mean, for one thing, when you're flying, um, you can see that the, uh, the, the, the profile here, the, the amount of surface area is huge compared to this. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the amount of drag is actually a bigger factor in a lot of ways than the, the, the total weight of a craft. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, because I'm always looking at things like thrust to weight ratio. So right. you, you figure, you know, you pair, oh, okay, I've got these props with these motors and this battery system. You do the math on a static calculator and you're like, okay, I'm generating a kilogram of thrust right. and I only weigh 250 grams. So I have a four to one thrust to weight ratio. Right. And that's, you know, four to one, 10 to one. I mean, it gets kind of crazy when you look at some of these. Right. Uh, I've always just looked at it like, okay, more power. You're saying there's a little more finesse to it than just more power. Sure, sure. So like if you look at this frame here and you look at the, 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 mm -hmm. the profile, these 13 millimeter arms, this tiny little fuselage, mm -hmm. there's so, very, very little wind resistance. And of course, oh, it's okay. less material, you so it's see. gonna be. If I put those arms side by side, you can see, yeah, there's a right. lot less for them to actually grab onto there, the, the wind that is. Right, right. 
Yeah, this is all propulsion, and th there's a lot of other stuff going on here. Mm -hmm. It's like, a, in fact, actually uh, flying something like this, it's kind of like a sail. Mm -hmm. Like you get a good gust. That's a good and analogy. And the whole yeah. bottom of it, it's kind of like the space shuttle in that it's a lifting body. Right. Right? I mean, you've got the wings, but the fuselage of the space shuttle helps generate that lift as well. Right. So it's very similar in something like this. Yes. Yeah, and here you've just got all your weight right in the center, so you're just right. kind of like a... Like a uh, <laughs> like a brick through a window, right? It's it's almost like a sphere. I mean, it, and the rotation uh, mm -hmm. to to take turns and something like this is you know more or less instant, and it just simplifies things because the handling is much more simple. Whereas uh, you know you get more yaw. There's there's just it's more complex to fly a craft like that, in my opinion. Okay, so two things there. You talked about uh, the maneuvering. Let's touch on that, but also getting into this for the very first time, getting into racing now. If you're a new pilot, right. uh, let's talk about setup because I know that when you go to configure a quadcopter, for example, we've been using Clean Flight, but you know there's many awesome flight controllers out there. Right. Uh, they all typically ask you to choose something like. Uh, what design are you, a plus, or are you an X? And then there, there's not really an H as right. much, so it's almost like the flight controllers are expecting equal distance between each of the four propellers, as opposed to here, where they're not actually equal distance. This isn't an X with a fuselage in the center. The distance between the you know front motors, and uh, the motors side to side and forward to back are, are different. Right, right, that's correct. Yeah, so does, that, does that make it easier to tune? I, I know PID so. tuning is just a black magic. Yeah, PID tuning is com complex, and it, it's it's more simple when the frame is symmetric like that. Mm -hmm. And so, would you recommend uh, to new pilots to get into an X to start with? I think it's a really good choice because you know you're going to get better performance. Uh, it's easier to fly, and uh, it's easier to tune. So I I, I think it's a you know, it's a good way to go. So let's talk about maneuverability because I think that's one of the areas where this really shines, not just because of the wind resistance, but you're yeah. talking about turning. Right. And like in a racing scenario where you're going through chicanes mm -hmm. and under gates and around uh, different obstacles, right. um, turning is where, I mean, just like in like Formula One racing or anything like that, that's where you're going to be passing people. Absolutely. Not yes. as much in the straightaways because I'm, most of the courses that people fly in, there will be like one good straightaway and then a lot of turns. Right, right, right. Yeah, so the, the agility of a frame, a, a, a pure X is, in my mind, uh, superior to an H. But, you know, a lot of it's personal preference. But that's what I've found. Okay, well, we have a, a couple of uh, Xs here, which is really interesting because I want to talk to you about some of the different power systems because I noticed here, like, these are very similar. However, you've paired them with much different motors and props, and so I want to talk to you a little bit about kind of the balance when it comes to that because over here, what is this? These are five-inch props. Right. And you're, you're pairing them with uh, some, what are these, 2204 motors? Yes, 2204 Cobras. Okay, and these things are doing what, like uh, 2300 kV? 2300, yeah. That's okay, great. so that's generating a lot of thrust. Right. But, but these guys right here with these DYS motors, mm -hmm. you're a little bit more kV, 2700. Right, right. So you're very, getting more rotation fast. per yes. volt. But at the same time, they are, uh, they're using four inch props, right. not five inch props. Right. So the, the other end of the equation is that, you know, it's a smaller frame and it's less drag. Mm hmm. So, and these are 1804s? Yeah, 1806s. 1806s okay, yeah. so what, what would be the difference? Like, wh what's, what are the characteristic differences between these two quadcopters? So, the agility on this, this frame and this motor setup is, it's, it's very high. Uh, this is a very, it's very simple to fly this through gates at high speed and maneuver mm -hmm. very quickly. This, the, the, the top end on this thing is just ludicrous. Um, so, that's kind of what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. And so, what about the the motors and and the props? Are you going to get like higher torque, or what? What oh, kind of different point. differences the in the specifications or in the flight characteristics are you going to see when you start playing with matching different motors and props? Gotcha. Yeah, like a four inch prop, you'll feel more locked in at a higher kV. It'll feel it'll feel more precise. It'll feel more controlled. Um, with the with the larger props, you get a lot of brute force and speed, but the uh, the 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 fine control control is a little different so you need it's a it's a higher level of skilled required to do the same maneuvers on this as this okay so two things that I noticed right off the bat as well just looking at these X's versus your more traditional 250 H racer this is right. a, a very common QAV 250 right. um, 
first off, you're using uh, tri blades right. as opposed to your, your typical you know, dual bladed props. Right. And then the other thing that I notice is if you look at the spacing between these, you know, tip to tip, right? I have like a good like three inches between those, yeah. and, and these are both five inch props. <coughs> it's just that these are tries and these are, are duels. Right. And the tolerances here, if I try to line those up there, you'll see they are very, yeah, if I can right. get this guy here, I'll bring right, down. You can see like, we're talking what, a millimeter, a couple of millimeters there? Yeah, about They're two. almost touching each other. Right, right. Yeah, and you know, early on, you, we'd always hear these things about the motors need to be this far apart and that and the other thing. But, you know, in, in, in practice, we don't see that that being a problem at all. Um, and what's interesting is to, to, to look at these two together, these have the same powertrain. Oh yeah, so, I same mean, motors. It's, it, it's really, it's like, you know, just the engine in a car, and this is just a much smaller car. Mm. Uh, it, it's the, the thrust generated and the wind resistance here, is, it's, it's a very significant difference in mm -hmm. how it uh, translates into performance and speed. Right, and so I also noticed that, like for example, these are, are bullnose props, so you're, you're generating some like vortices off the tips of these uh, propellers as they're spinning. Right. And so these vortices are just crashing into each other, and yet you're saying, as opposed to the conventional wisdom that we were all taught, right. many years ago when people were flying balsa wood uh, uh, 450s, uh, that it doesn't actually matter when the rubber meets the road? Right, well I'm sure that there's an impact there, but what we find is that um, the, the trade-off that we get uh, with this type of setup outweighs the, um, you know, whatever ta is taken away by the proximity of the props. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. You've been building these for some time now. I know you've been swearing on them because of the balance, because of the CG. Yeah. I know that once you, you know, strap a battery onto the bottom of these yeah. guys, you really just have like all the mass in the center. And yeah. you're saying that makes all the difference. Yes. And, and I, I can say from experience, losing to Kevin, <laughs> seriously losing many times in my H quad that I, I'm, I'm won over. I'm, I'm really thankful to, to take this little guy out and I'm excited to start playing around with the 130. Um, so it's just really exciting times to be in this racing scene yeah. as, as everything is moving so quickly. So yeah. what is, what's the next big thing that's exciting you in the racing community right now? Well, the, the prospect of getting real-time HD um, is incredibly exciting, and I hear that that's coming. Um, that's, you know, the, that would be just so much more uh, immersive to have, you know, a, a, a high-rate data stream into the goggles. Oh, yeah, I think actually, um, if you've been watching, like, FPV racing videos on YouTube, and you're like, wow, that looks so gorgeous and fun, it's, it's because people are using, like, 4K GoPros mounted to the front of their quadcopter. Right. What they're actually seeing in the goggles is standard definition, and if you're too young to remember that, um, ask your parents, because, over-the-air TV was really crappy like a decade ago. Right, right, yeah. yeah we, we've got like 600 TV lines uh, in, the, in our video feed, which is, you know, a lot less than 4K. Yeah, like imagine 640 by 480 Yeah, with a lot of fuzziness. It's no good. Oh, man. So it's, it's, anyway, it's just great to have you on to geek out about all of the little idiosyncrasies and the little tiny things that make those differences as we're all, you know, on an equal playing field here and yet so much innovation in the way that is all put together. Yeah. It's kind of, it reminds me of the early days of like, people building IBM clones, you know, uh, yeah. PC computers, and uh, and just like, it's the way you put it all together. It really is, yeah. Yeah, so uh, tell me, these you've put together yourself, these are your, your actual own brand of quadcopter. You right. wanna tell us a little bit about these? Yeah, these are uh, Razor quads, um, and this is the Razor 5, and this is the Razor 4, and then, you know, the naming convention's based on the prop size. Oh. And it's really, you know, I've, since I've become obsessed with this, I've been just spending time trying to make the perfect frame. Um, and I, you know, built, I don't know, probably hundreds of frames uh, and played with lots of different stuff. And this is really what I feel like is um, the best for me personally. And, and I think it translates well for a lot of people because of the agility and speed inherent to this design. Yeah, you should see this guy uh, flinging around the race course. You do a 180 without scrubbing any speed. It's kind of insane. And actually, to give you guys an example, because I, I raced with Kevin at, at, you know, 
not every weekend. I wish I could make it to every weekend's event, but uh, but I don't know how well you're gonna be able to get that, Shannon. But this is my like basher quad right there. And you can see that there's a little camera on the front. Yeah, so this is just a little camera. You just notice it's tilted up. And the reason for the up tilt is, uh, it, is that when you're flying, you know, you're going like this. So this would be, my camera is level. That's kind of the attitude of my quadcopter. If we compare that to yours over here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're damn near sideways, Kevin. Right, right. <laughs> so hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of the difference in speed and, uh, and, and just the, the ballsiness of this. This is a really awesome build. Thanks for sharing this hey, with thanks us. thanks a lot. Yeah, everybody uh, check these out. And with that, we're gonna take a quick break. But man, Kevin, it's great Good to have you on again. Thanks. I did the most amazing thing this morning. I had an idea and I brought it onto the internet. And let me tell you how I did it. I went over to domain.com and I used their epic domain discovery system to help me find the perfect domain and then the quick and simple checkout system had my website up and online in no time. I, I'm not lying, guys, this is literally what I did like a couple hours ago, and I used coupon code HAK5. You know why? Because domain.com has been supporting Hack5 for years. They love what we do, they love you guys, and they wanna hook you up, and that's why we have that special code that saves you 15% off. So I just wanna remind you guys that you should tweet at domain.com and say, hey, thanks for supporting Hack5 all these years. And then when you're thinking about getting your next domain, go to domain.com, do what Shannon and I do. Get your website up and online real quick and easy. When you think domain names, think domain.com. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack5. But before we get going, very exciting announcements. We want to clue you in on some really cool things happening here at the Hack5 warehouse. And that is, in addition to pen tests with Hack5, which is so much fun with Mubix and Sebastian and I teaching the ins and outs of penetration testing in a story-driven environment, we are doing very similarly. Fly with Hack5, learn all the details at flywithhack5.com and join us in our very first workshops as we will be teaching the ins and outs with us, the experts, with Kevin, with Josh. It's gonna be so much fun building and flying FPV quadcopters. So walk, you know, walk in, not knowing anything, walk away with a heap of material, tools, and have, being, have built and learned to fly and tune your very first quadcopter. Wow. It's exciting stuff. Uh, they get so, to take home their own stuff. Huh? Yeah, it's going to be. Nice. It's a really fun endeavor for us to do. We are so passionate about it. We have done similar stuff at the uh, Hack Five open houses. Yeah. And so we're like, hey, let's take it to the next logical level. And it just makes sense that we could just standardize on a craft that we can all come together and build and learn all of the stuff uh, hands on more than we can ever try to bespoke to you in a uh, half hour episode of Hack5. <laughs> and of course, if you are new here, you can check out our new videos, our Welcome to Hack5 videos over on YouTube or hack5.org. Uh, hopefully that will introduce some new concepts to your friends and get some more people watching the show. We yes. really appreciate your support. And if you have any questions or concerns that you wanna throw our way, you can always email us feedback at hack5.org. Absolutely. And you know what, speaking of hack5.org, if you go to the homepage now, you'll find the details on meetups all around the world as we hack across the planet. So go mine's ahead. mine's already happened. Yeah, it may have been because we were recording before we leave. <laughs> but uh, that's where you'll find details on Tokyo uh, as well as Sydney and the Gold Coast. And who knows? Who knows where we'll go next? It's really exciting because people are emailing us and being like, hey, opportunities await. And that's so it's awesome. a really... I want to go to Ireland. Well, there you go. You should have an Ireland meetup. Hi, Alexis. I was about to say, if you go to Dublin, there's one man you need to meet. Yeah. Hey, with that said, uh, very excited that you guys have been helping us live the dream and make this happen. You can continue uh, supporting us directly if you would like over at hackshop.com, hakshop.com. That's where you can find all of the penetration testing equipment that we put so much love into uh, at this very own warehouse. So thank you so much for that. Thanks for subscribing and stick your comments below and we'll check them out. There you go. Stick your comments below. Stick them below. There you go. All right. right there. With that said, I'm Darren <laughs> Kitchen. <laughs> I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your technolust. What? Ciao, Nick. No, you're doing it again. Mushy, mushy. No, stop it. You scare me when you do that face. You're making the audience sad. Look at them. Hotel wa doko desu ka? I, there's subtitles, right? <laughs> I, why can't I see them? Oh, what if they like just popped up but they were backwards and I had to go like this to see them? That'd be really cool. Oh, that'd be weird. Yeah. <laughs>